What's going on, Performance Posse? It's Andrew coming to you from the Basement Workshop once again. It's the middle of March here in Wisconsin. The lakes in my neck of the woods are no longer safe for ice fishing, but that's okay. The rivers are open and flowing. The walleyes are starting to run a little bit, and that means hair jig season is upon us. One of my favorite methods to catch spring walleyes is on a hair jig, but not just any hair jig. I've got one particular jig that I like better than any other, and I'm going to show you guys how to make it here in just a minute. Stay tuned. All right, you guys, I'm over here at my fly tying vise. I have my favorite jig ready to roll. I pre-painted it for this video. Uh, this color, I'm going to try to zoom in on it a little bit. Hopefully, you guys can see that. This is uh, Protec powder paint. It's called Junebug with green flake. This is my go-to color, you guys. I love this color. I probably throw this color 80% of the time when I'm fishing out on the Mississippi River. This is the only color I would bring out there if I could only bring one. We're going to tie this with uh, purple hair, a little bit of chartreuse accent, and I've got some flash flashes, strictly optional. I don't generally put it in when I'm fishing the Mississippi River, but um, some guys prefer it. So I'm going to tie this particular jig with the flash in there just so you guys can see it. Also, keep in mind when you buy your bucktails, there's generally two shades of purple. Um, I know it probably doesn't look like it down here in the basement, but this is the dark purple. Uh, I prefer the dark purple over the light purple. However, if I can't find the dark, the light purple will work just fine. Um, I'm going to be using 210 denier uh, nylon flat wax thread. And rather than head cement, I'm just going to use some uh, clear nail polish here to uh, finish everything up here. I'm going to flip this camera around. going to get this jig right here in the vise, and we're going to start tying. I'll show you guys this pattern. You guys, I promise you, give this jig a try. Uh, you will not be disappointed. All right, you guys, you can see I've got this thing locked in the vise now. Um, again, you guys, I'm doing this on a GoPro down in my basement. I know the lighting's not great. The zoom is going to be a little bit tough because this GoPro doesn't even have a zoom function, but I will flip the camera around and zoom in on it periodically so that you guys can see what I've got going on here. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a base layer with my thread. Just get that tag end out of there right quick. Laying this base layer down is really important, you guys. It just gives that hair something to grab a hold of when you first start tying the jig. Um, if you do this on just the painted jig head, it's a little bit slick, and it doesn't quite go as smoothly as you'd like it to. So um, if you hear the sump pump running in the background, I apologize for that. It has been uh, really wet here. It rained for the better part of the day yesterday, so my sump pump is just um, kicking on and off. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a small tuft, this is just going to be a little accent for this jig. This jig is going to be predominantly purple, you guys. But I put just a little bit of chartreuse on what would be the belly. And when you cut your um, bucktail, you guys, cut it from down here by the tail. Um, if you cut from the end, you'll lose a lot of your action in the water. So Next thing I do is I just kind of pull out the short hairs. You will get a few shorts in there. I work those out easier to do it now than after the fact see those little guys will pop out of there you want to get as many of those taken care of as we can next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure it up that's a little bit long so I'm gonna trim just a little bit here And hopefully you guys can see this on the camera, but I try to square off that edge just as best I can. Keeps everything nice and neat. Gives the jig a nice profile. Makes it easier to wrap. Gonna get a couple of loose wraps on there. That's gonna kind of hold it in place. I can spread it, push it exactly where I want it, and then I can lock it down with some tighter wraps. Not too concerned about covering everything up. I like to build my jigs in stages. Um, some guys, like when we switch to this purple, some guys will just grab a big clump of purple and they'll throw it all on in one shot. You can certainly do that. I think the jigs come out a little bit cleaner if you build it in stages, but like I said, that's entirely up to you. I'm down to the nitty gritty on my dark purple, you guys, but this is my favorite color. Um, I've got the light purple down here in the shop. I've got almost a full bucktail of that, but if I can get away with not using it, I definitely prefer the dark purple. Again, I'm just pulling a few of those short, short ones out of there. We're going to spin this 180 degrees. Try to get my arm out of there quick. You guys, and again, I'm not a professional cameraman, so 
go easy on me on the comments. I know I get some comments sometimes. Guys aren't happy with my camera work, but like I said, I'm just a dude in the basement with a GoPro. Certainly not a professional YouTuber. Just trying to spread some good information for you guys, help you guys out a little bit. So hopefully this works for you guys. All right, I'm going to lock that in kind of loose again like I did the last time. Spread that around just a little bit, and then we'll tight that down nice. We'll cinch it down nice and tight. Okay, I'm going to flip this thing over on its side. And I'm going to try to just get a top shot of this so you guys can kind of see what I've got so far. Bring that in slow so hopefully it doesn't uh, go out of focus too terribly bad. Set that down. I'm using some tackle boxes, some plain old tackle boxes to hold my camera. Again, super professional setup down here in my shop, you guys. I'm going to tie in a little bit of this flash real quick. Again, this is not required. This is strictly optional. Grab a couple pieces of this. One thing if you guys do tie flash, you guys, that's going to be super important. Get it started. A couple of wraps. And then fold it back over before you finish the wrap. It'll, uh, it'll double up your flash, number one. Number two, it's just going to make it really tough to pull out of there. Um, if you do this, um, you'll lose these jigs to the bottom of the river before that flash ever falls out of there. So that's the way I like to do it. The flash will come in and we'll trim that up at the end. This is way too long, but that's okay. We're going to clean that up later. We're going to grab a little more purple here. Don't need a ton. Just a little pinch. You guys can kind of hopefully see that's about how much I'm taking off with each one of these uh, sections. Again, you can do that in a much larger clump and spread it out as you like, but I like to build it up in stages. I just think the jig comes out cleaner and looks better when we do it that way. I'm going to square up this edge over my garbage can real quick. And you guys, when this isn't on camera, you can tie these up really quick. There's nothing... Uh, nothing to really hold you up on this this is a really easy jig to tie get that loose set it in there just the way I want it and then I'll tighten down on it again real nice I'm gonna get some of this out of my way just because it's bugging me but I'm gonna flip this thing around we're going to tie in another section of flash. Again, certainly not required. But some guys really like it. Again, I don't care one way or the other about it. Uh, usually when I'm fishing the Mississippi River, that current um, is really ripping. I don't think they're getting that good of a look at it. It's more of a reactionary strike. We're snap jigging this off the bottom. Um, you guys, the nice thing about this jig too is I pour these myself and I can pour it as low as a quarter ounce and all the way up to three quarters of an ounce. Um, let the flow of the river dictate which size jig head you're going to use. Uh, I always tell everybody use the lightest jig you can possibly get away with but still um, keep contact with the bottom. You know, um, you can add a stinger hook on this jig if you like. If they're short striking a little bit, sometimes the... Uh, Stinger hook, I usually use like a number 10 Mustad treble hook for a stinger on these. I tie my own stingers. You guys, I refuse to go to the store and pay those outrageous prices for stinger hooks. Especially, again, when you're fishing the Mississippi River in particular, uh, you're going to leave a lot of these jigs on the bottom of the river, which is why I pour my own. I just pour these on an Eagle Claw 570. I don't do anything real fancy with the hook because, again, like I said, I'm gonna catch some. I'm gonna catch a lot of fish on these, but I'm also gonna lose a lot of these to the bottom of the river. So um, we're just tying in this last side real quick. Spread that out a little bit. Lock it down. This jig is almost done, you guys. Um, hopefully, you're not just bored to tears by listening to me ramble on while I do this. But again, you guys, pour these jigs. If you buy the mold, it's the Do It Flat Side jig head, or I'll get you the exact model number here before the end of the video. But um, you know, pour it in all different sizes. Use the lightest size you can get away with. 
uh, and still feel the bottom of the river. Um, bottom contact is really important when you're fishing this jig. So um, there's days uh, if you fished like below uh, below the dam in Genoa, for instance, you might need a three quarter ounce uh, head just to keep that bottom contact. Um, this is how I finish my jigs, you guys. I'm not a traditional tire. I know a lot of guys will use a whip finish right here. I'm just going to take an old piece of braid, loop it over, and I'm going to wrap around it a good 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go a couple more times just for good measure. Pull a bunch of excess. Hopefully, my hands are in camera view here. I'm going to hold on to it tie that off I'm gonna come around one more time and I'm gonna just drop that through my loop keeping the tension on it so it doesn't unravel just like so and now I'm gonna grab my tag ends right here and just give that a nice little pull and you can see what that did is it pulled that line right back underneath itself cut the tag end off only thing left to do now is hit this you can use head cement you can use super glue um, super glue and hair don't go together the best the super glue will leave a little bit of a white residue on the hair uh, if it runs down that's why I like the uh, nail polish better it doesn't seem to have that um, whitening effect on the hair itself if it bleeds together a little bit just give that a nice little coat And that's it you guys only thing left to do with this jig is let it dry we'll trim that flash up a little bit and I'll give you guys a closer look at it once that's dry all right you guys here's a quick peek at that jig mold that I was talking about it's the do it molds flathead jig assorted sizes model number is JF 5a I'm sure you can pick this mold up on Barlow's tackle.com here's one last peek at the jig now that it's all done Purple and chartreuse, you guys, this is a deadly combination. Like I said, I've had tons of success with this on the Mississippi River. Uh, I've had done pretty good on the Rock River with it as well. I know some guys that have fished it on the Wisconsin and the uh, Green Bay tributaries as well. Um, super, super productive pattern, you guys. Hopefully you tie this, give it a shot. Um, if you're local to the Wisconsin area, I buy a lot of my tackle crafting supplies from uh, Bob Reinke at Reinke Brothers Tackle. Um, stop by and give Bob a visit. I'm sure he'd love to have you. He's got everything under the sun right in the shop there. Even if you don't want to buy the mold, there's a good chance he'll have some of these jig heads uh, just blank so you can paint them up in time as you wish. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Hopefully you guys tie this pattern up. Let me know how it works for you. Um, get out there and chase those walleyes this spring, you guys. This is the best time of year probably to chase a trophy. Um, they should be coming in uh, the Green Bay tributaries up in De Pere. The Mississippi River should start running really good soon. Um, again, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got some valuable information here. If you did, smash that thumbs up button for me. You guys give the video a like. Leave your comments below. I appreciate all the feedback. Share it with your friends. Let's see if we can't grow the channel. I know we just passed 400 subscribers, which, uh, you know, that's not a ton, but it's a good milestone for me. Let's see if we can push this thing up to 500. If we get to 500, we'll do a little giveaway. But again, you guys, I appreciate all the support. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, everybody, tight lines.